Hello everyone and thank you for joining. Today I would like to focus on being still and particularly the verse in Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I'm not sure about you, but I'm missing the quietness of the lockdown. No noise from cars on the road, no aeroplanes, no loud chatter from people on the street. Just silence intermingled with birdsong and insects. Happy sounds. These are obviously physical sounds. I personally have ever experienced quite a bit of emotion and spiritual stillness during lockdown. I was very blessed in that I did not have to fret over how I was going to survive financially, so I could just be quiet at times. I spent a large part of the time watching the seasons come and go, the joy of new life, and just generally the beauty of God's creation. There was no way I could get up, look at my beautiful garden, and not know that my God was there and is an awesome God. What does it mean to be still? I will share two examples of where be still has differing Hebrew roots. In Exodus 14 verse 14 we read, The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Here the Hebrew word is karash, which means be still, keep calm, be silent. Exodus 14 verse 14 is part of the grander story of the Exodus. In particular, this passage comes from the part of the story where the Egyptians are approaching the Israelites as they backed up against the Red Sea. Verse 14 verse 10 tells us that the Israelites were extremely frightened and cried out to God for help. Then they turn to Moses and start asking him why he didn't just leave them in Egypt. They start saying that they were better off being slaves in Egypt than they would, would be now dying by the hands of the Egyptians in the desert. But Moses rebukes them. And that's where verse 14, verse 14 comes in. Moses tells the people that God is going to deliver them yet again. You need only to be still, he says, using the Hebrew karash. Moses is telling them to be quiet, hush up, and watch what God is going to do for them. In our verse today, uh, in Psalm 46 verse 10, the Hebrew definition is literally to relax, let go of your need to control everything, stop striving, let go, surrender. I'd like to share another passage of where the word be still is used. In Mark 4, we read about Jesus calming the storm. Jesus was asleep in the stern of the boat whilst the furious squall came up. His disciples panicked and woke him to ask him to do something. He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. The Greek word for be still used in this passage is pephimozo or fimo, which means to muzzle, silence, keep under control, to hush. Again, the word hush. We see a similar verse in Psalm 107, verse 28 to 29. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm still, and the waves of the seas were hushed. How do we develop a regular pattern of being still? Christians often interpret the command to be still as to be quiet in God's presence. While quietness is certainly helpful, the phrase means to stop frantic activity, to let down, relax and to be still. Our busy lives often prevent us from being still. Our work, our hobbies, our interactions with others, social media and the news keep us busy for a large part of the day. Many of us are also intimidated by silence. 
silence can after all cause us to address issues that we might be running from. How often do we ask God for things, but we don't stop to listen? I often think of an example of going to see the doctor and rattling off all my symptoms and then saying, okay, bye, without waiting for his response. It's often the same with God. We have our prayer requests, and then we say amen and continue with our daily task. We must remember to be quiet in order to hear God's voice. Wait on God. We also need to learn to hush ourselves. The next time you have fearful and anxious thoughts that are raging within you like a storm, do as Jesus did. Silence those thoughts by saying, peace, be still. The act of being still is a challenge in our hectic world. The world asks us to be busy. God asks us to be still so that we can receive love, peace, and guidance. We may sometimes not put enough emphasis on the second part of the, this verse. Know that I am God. God created everything in the universe. The moon, the stars, the sun, the sky, the clouds, the plants, the animals, the birds, and of course mankind. And he did so in abundance. In Jeremiah 32, verse 27, we read, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Let's look at some examples of how awesome our God is. Abram and Sarah promised a child in old age. Abram was 100 and Sarah was 90 at the time. Humanly speaking, it was impossible. At first, Abram laughed at the idea, and afterwards Sarah laughed also. And then it was the Lord himself who said in Genesis 18 verse 14, Is anything too hard for the Lord? God enabled the Israelites to pass through the Red Sea unharmed and on dry land. He solved the problem of the bitter water at Merah. He gave them water out of the rock. He turned water into wine. He fed the 5,000 with hardly any food. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And on the cross, a condemned criminal was gloriously converted in his dying hour. How Amazing our God is. How awesome. And maybe God is saying to us here, stop striving, stop fighting, and stop trying to do things on your own. I am your refuge and your strength. You have nothing to fear or worry about when I'm with you. I will fight your battles and deal with your enemies. Step back. Let me be God. Don't try and do my job for me. Be patient, be still, and let me go to work. Again, we ask ourselves, is anything too hard for the Lord? And we're now going to look at something we've spoken about before, to let go and let God. When we can't control a situation we're facing, fear takes over. Most of the time, we won't always know the outcome of the challenges we face. Our frazzled minds can chase unknowns, leaving us empty and without hope. Letting go is scary. Letting go means letting go of control. No one wants to be out of control. But you can't control everything. You can't control outcomes. You have to let go. Let go of past hurts, past mistakes anxious and fearful thoughts. You can become a prisoner of your own thoughts, repeating them day after day. Letting go means trusting God, trusting 
that the right outcome is in God's hands. Spend time with God and tell him about your anxiety, sadness, anger, anything that's on your mind. As I said before, we also need to set time aside to be quiet and listen for his answers. Sometimes these may come through a scripture or a devotional or his Holy Spirit speaking into our minds. But we must always remember that God is in control. He hears our prayers. He always answers, even when it's not in the way we want or expect or not in our timeline. But in those times when darkness seems to envelop us, we wrestle with giving control to the only one with the power to bring us through it. Being still and knowing he's God means moving to a new level of trust. A level that will challenge our faith in remarkable ways. What does the Bible say about faith, trust and patience? In Hebrews 11 verse 1 we read, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, the assurance about what we have not seen. In Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, we read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. And finally, in Psalm 37, verse 7, we read, Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Just before we pray, I would like to share this quote from Mother Teresa. We need to find God, and he cannot be found in noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. See how nature, trees, flowers, grass, grows in silence. See the stars, the moon and the sun, how they move in silence. We need silence to be able to touch souls. May we pray. I would like to share a prayer for letting go, written by Jackie Trotman. Dear God, in this moment, I let go of all thoughts and concerns. When I let go, I'm able to receive. When my hands are formed into tight fists, I cannot open my hands to receive anything. When I hang on to tight control, when I close off my heart and my spirit, I cannot receive your blessings for me. I let go to receive your blessings. Letting go in this moment, I receive your loving presence around me and within me. Help me to let go when I'm feeling overwhelmed so that I may receive your peace. Help me to let go when I feel fear so that in fear's place, I may receive love and courage. I let go of problems and challenges in order to receive your guidance and clarity. I let go and trust you. I will not fall. You will catch me. I let go and trust in the still small voice inside of me. Help me not to struggle, but to surrender my struggle to you. I gladly receive this gift of letting go and letting you lead me and guide me. Amen. Let's now be reminded of our amazing shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. Oh, yeah. 
Your goodness will lead. 